My name is David Odoyo. I love the Lord this morning. I'm married to one Josephine, confirmed wife and female. <laughs> confirmed female, eh? And you are blessed with two children. One is called Joe, who is in grade two. And one is called Rose, who is in PP1. PP1. We normally attend the service, second service at Cathedral. And our children also attend the Sunday school at Cathedral. So we decided not to change that program. But because they know I am here, they have sent their greetings. Because it is a men's, a men's Sunday, we are crowning up the men's week. If there's a lady next to you, kindly tell them, welcome to men's Sunday. Welcome to men's Sunday. So, ladies, we really appreciate you as men. You know, God was walking in the Garden of Eden and he saw a man whom he created and he said it's not good for a man to be alone. So even as we celebrate, <laughs> even as we celebrate the men's week, we appreciate ladies in our midst. So, uh, you know, when I was told that uh, the area is unfamiliar territory for me, and uh, because I've been a pulpit only in Kipigwa picture. So when I was told of this, and I remember the story of the young Samuel and uh, Ellie. So I was trying to listen to myself after we have talked with somebody, with the person who called me. And I was trying to, con to take the context of Samuel and Ellie. When God called Samuel three times, and Samuel, Instead, you used to run to Eli, asking, have you called me? You have called me. Actually, the, 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 the expression is that you have called me. Now, I was asking myself, Samuel had lived with Eli. He might have known the voice of Eli. And this one was not Eli calling. But Samuel was still going, you have called me. So I was trying to imagine that maybe, because God can do everything. I was trying to imagine that maybe God was calling Samuel with the voice of Eli. Because if it was not, why was he going that you have called me? In fact, to me, I thought we could have gone to ask. Somebody is calling me and I don't know who he is. But he was going that you have called me. If I know Pastor Brian and I know the voice and he calls me, how you know that Pastor Brian have called me? But if we are with Pastor Brian and the voice is not his, I could have asked, by the way, Pastor, somebody is calling me. So he could have guided me further. So when the person called me, I was like, is he him calling me or now it is God calling the, the scenario of Samuel land? And because of that, I did not have otherwise. And when I remember John, it also says, the book of John, that, you know, I chose you, you do not choose me. So I said, okay, if you have appointment with me, I will come. And here I am. God is good. God is good. I was trying to look at the, our theme. This is on the Thanksgiving. And uh, in most of the time, we normally give thanks when things go on our way. When we get what we deserve, what we wanted, what we are looking for, it is very easy for people to say, thank you very much. Now, by the way, just the last Sunday, I graduated as well, 2023. <laughs> the class of 2023, 2024, who are here, I celebrate you all. But see, 
you know, I just graduated. Even before I prepare my CV, I already have a job. <laughs> so please, if you are still tomacking, don't feel bad. Na tena nikitoka hapa usinipigie msara ni mwisho wa mwe. Mwisho wa mwe si. But I thank God for that. I want us to to look first Thessalonians 5:18. And I want us to read it together. We 1 2 3 In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Let us hold it there. In everything, in all circumstances, in all situations, that's what the Bible tells us. In all situations, give thanks. It continues to say, this is the will of God in Christ for you. So, thanksgiving is a command from God. See, the will of God is a command of God. So it, and it, it says, don't give thanks when things are on your way. The Bible does not tell us that. Don't give thanks only when you are happy. But what does the Bible say? In all situations, in all circumstances, kindly give thanks. So, and that is why I try to choose my topic, the gratitude in the middle of a mess. Gratitude in the middle of a mess. Because in most of the time, we find it hard to express gratitude when things are hard on our side. When things does not work. When you try and everything is not working. At the time when you are at the lowest moment, do we, fi do we find it easy to give thanks? So that is what the Bible is reminding us. That let us give thanks in all circumstances, in all situations. In most of the time, people normally, when they say thanks, when they remember all the good things that have been happening in their life. And most of the people find it very hard, very hard to express gratitude. And you see, even the Bible says us that enter in its gate with the thanksgiving. Come into its presence with thanksgiving. Now, I want us to concentrate in this thanksgiving. And let us check. Where does, I was trying to find out, where does the gratitude start from? The thanksgiving. Where does it start from? And you will find that uh, when you check the Genesis 1, 31, after God had created everything, the Bible tells us that God looked at everything he created and said it was good. God himself decided to appreciate what he has made. So gratitude started by with God himself. God did not say that now I've made the crocodile see how the way it looks. No, he did not look at the negative part of the things that God had made. But what God did is that everything that created, that's what the, the Bible tells us. Everything that God created, God realized that everything that he created was good. So the gratitude started from God itself. God itself appreciated its own work. Do we appreciate what we do? Do we appreciate the small things that we have? The little things that we have in our life. Is there any time that we appreciate it? Have you done everything or something? You look at it and you give thanks and you appreciate. If God, the creator, you know, God had even the ability kutoa yote na umbe tena. Sindio? Angesema hii kichwa jaka mzuri, akate, atafanya nini na the power, he had the, he had the authority. He's the creator. He had all the power. But once he completed the creation, he looked at them and say, they are all good. So God himself appreciated what he has done. Now, if God appreciates his own work, we are telling you that you can see it, now you can't appreciate. Everything that we have, remember the Bible tells us, none is ours. 
ni kama umesaidiwa si ndio na you can't appreciate he me created he made everything he started it all but he said it was good let us see also when god was walking in the garden of eden you know there's that verse majorly people just use it during marriage that god saw that it is not good for a man to be alone but i want to give it a different context when god saw everything he created and a man in the garden of eden god saw that a man was only by himself and god had completed creation he had finished because the bible tells us that god created everything and the man was created last it means that after creation of a man god had created god had completed his entire work of creation but when god despite the fact that he has already completed the entire creation god saw that a man is alone and a man need a companion a man need a helper he need a somebody like him he need somebody to walk along with him god become became more creative so gratitude can lead to creativity god became more creative again and he said even though i have completed but god came up with that i will give this one a deep sleep i will remove one rib and i will make somebody for him creativity again came up in the garden of eden out of appreciation if god could have been looking at a man and say hey, what is this i've created he could have not thought of giving a man another companion but you see god appreciating what he created and he wanted that creation to continue god again became more creative and god made a human out of a man despite the fact that he had completed creation Another thing that we also see when Eve was brought to Adam there's another aspect that I see in that verse you know a man was asleep he woke up then he found another human being immediately so you call, you you actually if you have been alone in the house then you are sleeping then you wake up then you find somebody is around You know uh, you know I was trying to look at it how could you have rea- re- reacted eh maybe kanduru kidogo but when Eve was brought to Adam Adam was like wow the flesh of my flesh the rib of my of my rib appreciating at the first sight they have not even engaged he had not even known whether they will rhyme or not <laughs> what did he do appreciate what has been given immediately adam appreciated you know i was looking at also that, that scenario of garden of eden adam and the young guys of today if you know for example you are the only man existing in the world the entire universe you are the only man and a lady comes you know i was imagining now the young guys could have pocketed and ngeringa kidogo because angasema otherwise akuna mwingine ni mimi tu ni mimi tu but you see adam immediately on the first sight with the image of god because adam was created in the image and likeness of god with that image of god he took the character of god of appreciating and Adam appreciated immediately in fact it was out of appreciation that he also gave her a name you will be called woman because you are from a man so the power in gratitude the gratitude is a very powerful process that can change the entire life the gratitude can change destiny the gratitude is very powerful that if used in the right way 
it will open the doors that only God can open. So I call upon us this morning that I know you, it is not a must that everything must go on the right that you want. But can we develop the attitude of gratitude? And the Bible calls us to start with the small things that we have. Start appreciating your colleagues. If you come to church this morning, can you appreciate that you find an usher who wipes the chair and it is very neat and you can sit? Can you appreciate that you meet a security who showed where to park? Can you appreciate that there's a protocol who carry your things, bring them in, and ensure that you have one, two, three? Can you start with that? Can you even appreciate that you, even here where we are, you are in a very neat compound. Start with things that you can see, the little that you can start with. Don't always, when you come, you go immediately to what is negative. Negativity breeds a curse. I want to tell you, brethren, that gratitude is a language of the heaven. It brings blessings. It opens door. And as we talk about the gratitude, I must also know, let you know that there's something called complaining. The very opposite of gratitude. Complaining, murmuring, gambling. You grumble every time, fault finding. You always think everything is not enough. And remember, complaining, I can say, it comes from the devil. When does the complaint start? If you go to Genesis 3, 12. After, let us have it there. Then the man said, the woman you, whom you gave to be with me. Adam started. The origin of complaint. Now, it is not the flesh of my flesh. It is not the rib of my rib. Now it is the who? It is the woman whom you gave me. And let us also check, when does, what led to this? What led to that? When they had been, they were visited by the snake, the devil. They have gone against the will of God. Now they are complaining. Complaints come from the devil. It is not heavenly language. It is not a language of brethren. Fall finding is not our language as Christians. Grumbling is not our portion as the children of God. Because it only started in the Garden of Eden after the devil visited. Not before. And you can read your Bible. You will realize that before snake visited, Eve remained the flesh of my flesh. And every time that God visited, they would come out and meet God. But what happened after the devil visited? They will hide and complain. So complain is a breed of the devil. It's a seed that is only being shown by the devil. It germinates and only watered by the devil. And it is only being harvested by the devil. So, brethren, let us turn from this scene of complaint and let us pick the attitude of gratitude in small things, in things that we consider least. Jesus said, whatever you do to the least person, you did it to 
You know, Jesus did not say whatever you do to a best friend, whatever you do to somebody higher in the authority, whatever you do where, whatever you did to the la, to the least. And it was giving a very, if you see the examples that he was giving, that I was sick and you came to see me. That I was in prison, you see. He was giving that picture of trying complementing the small, small things. People can say that, okay, I'm always grateful or thankful. But that also brings me to one thing. There must be a difference between thankful and giving thanks. What is being thankful? Because people say, but I'm, I'm thankful. Don't force me to say it. A lot of people talk about that. I'm grateful. And people misuse this thing like, do good and go your way. Because they don't want to appreciate. So they tell you, do good and and go in silent. But is that the will of God? If God himself appreciated him, and he appreciated his own work, now why must you say somebody who have helped you to do and go away? without appreciating. Being thankful is something we are. That is being thankful, something we are. I might be grateful. Maybe you don't say it. But does God only need us to be grateful or to be thankful? For even after being grateful or thankful in your heart, God expects us to verbally give thanks. So, being thankful is something we have. Giving thanks is what we give in appreciation of what we go through. So, God expects us not only to be thankful, but to give thanks. Speak it out. God wants to hear that voice of gratitude from the heart of his children. Not only to be grateful and keep it in your heart. God is concerned about us speaking thanksgiving. Let's see Luke 17 11 to 19. And it's a story, we'll not read it, but it's a story about the ten lepers. Jesus healed the ten lepers. One of them came to say, thank you. So that's correct. What did Jesus ask? The question was, huh? The question was, were you not ten? Where are the other? What does that one tell us? Christ expected us to say, thank you. Come out with it. Because I could say that I don't want to imagine that the remaining nine were not grateful. They were clean. They were healed from the leprosy. They no longer had leprosy. So I know that in their heart they were grateful. The only thing they did not do, they did not come out again to say thank you. And that is what Jesus wanted. That is what we are being told. Speak it out. Don't feel grateful in your heart. For who? Let us come out and say thank you. Always, let us have this language of gratitude in our life. When you are grateful, God will open more doors for other things for you to be grateful for. You know, you cannot give what you don't have. We are being told. If you're always complaining, 
Why must God bless you and give you more things to complain about? God expects us to be grateful in the small things so that he can open the larger doors for us to be grateful for the bigger things. It is not the other way around. It is unfortunate that all of us, we always want to be grateful for bigger things at once. And being creative in thanksgiving, because once you appreciate what you have, you, come, you become creative on using what God has given you. And this can open more doors. I want to give you a typical example. My wife, Josephine, studied accounting. And uh, she was not working in accounting field. But she was passionate about being an accountant. And sometimes she could complain. And uh, I heard about it. And I told her, no. First of all, you should thank God that you have that certificate of accounting. Many people do not have it. Then again, thank God that you have a job, even if it is not accounting. Then, having appreciated those two in her life, I decided there's one of us we serve with in the security. I decided to link them up. And you see, the reason why we, we used to apply for accounting job, you are being told like two year experience, so you, you don't have the experience. So I looked at it and I said, the problem here is the experience, it is not the certificate. So when I link them up, then that lady Ted trained her for one month in the practical account. Then now we could change the CV. Now when we apply, we write one year experience. <laughs> I can tell you, today, even if she's not working in a big company, but she's accountant. Wow. Using what, being grateful for what God has given you, appreciating what God has placed in your hand, then become creative, be gratitude, and be creative with it. God will bless that. But the problem we have is that we don't. We don't appreciate, especially even if God has given it to us. And maybe it has not reached to the level that we wanted. For you to even to move to the next level, you must appreciate the level where you are. From the level where you are, start with gratitude at that level. It's when you trust God to the next le level, giving thanks. Jesus had, <clears throat> we are being told there were 5,000 men. You know, and I was imagining in the old days, maybe people, people were polygamous, because the Bible also only tells us about the men. The men. Then the disciples came and says, we are in a remote area and these people do not have where, what to eat. He released them. There's what's called the power of gratitude during hard times the power of gratitude during hard times. At that time that your life is a mess, there is a power in giving thanks. The power of gratitude during hard times. Jesus was given five loaves and two fish. I was trying to imagine this congregation have come, the usher is given five chairs. And I've been told, can you settle everybody down? So I was, I was imagining of Asha at Silo. You'll be given five chairs, Pastor Bruce will call you and say, this is the five chairs. Kindly ensure that everybody has seated. 
The people of these ones. I know the first question, is Pastor Bittik mad? How can he give me five chairs and with all these people? If it is your responsibility to have everybody settle, you are given five. Can you say thank you? Now, if, if there were 40, now I only have 35 standing. You start with that. Then you look for the remaining 35. But what do we do? What do we do in that case? Now, put yourself in the shoe of Jesus. The Jesus has been given in your mati. Men peke yake wanaume. Wele wanakule mzuri. 5,000. Then, unajua, atuje isabu wale wale wengine hapa katikati hii <laughs> genge ingine hii kukuna kuanga hapa katikati very active eh? but you see the bible tell us in that verse Jesus took the loaf of bread the fish looked at harp and gave thanks after giving thanks what was not enough became enough Just by a glyph of giving thanks, a miracle happened. Thanksgiving, gratitude will drop a miracle in your life. What you only need to do, always practice the word gratitude. Let it be your common language. Watch a kwe yako yamta. Kila mahali, say thank you. Gratitude. The gratitude, I repeat, it is a tool, powerful. It opens the doors that only God can open. Jesus did not ask. Now, Munanletia Mkatitano, Nifanya Nayo Nina Watu. He could have asked. By the way, he was the boss. He could have chased them away. Tokeni hapa na imkati yenu tenu. Isa maki peleka uko. Christ did not do it. Because the Christ knew the secret of his father. Gratitude. It said, people are many, but God, at least we have something. I thank you. When he gave it, we are being told, Ilibaki. The miracle happened out of gratitude. Let's see Christ visiting the Lazarus. The Lazarus was already dead. Lord, was it always he? Inanu? Read that verse again at your free time. Jesus did not even pray for Lazarus. He didn't. Christ looked up and gave thanks. Gratitude led to resurrection. Just thanksgiving. He just gave thanks. That is what Christ did. He just gave thanks. After giving thanks, the miracle happened. Let's look at Daniel. The law had been passed, signed by the king Dairas. And you know, Daniel knew this law was targeting him. Already knew. He could have complained. God, you know, I've been worshipping you. Now you allow this to happen. You could have held the hand of the king and sign. God, you could have struck these people dead. If you read Daniel 6.10, it tells you one thing. Daniel went back to the window, prayed and gave thanks. The thanksgiving that Daniel gave shut the mouth of the lions. They could not touch him. The thanksgiving. Because Daniel only gave thanks. But the way we are told, he went back every time, three times, pray and give thanks. That's what he did. There was nothing, no magic that Daniel was doing. 
He was only praying and giving thanks. He did not even know what was awaiting at him. Future. Later on, he didn't know. That garden of life, the garden of lion and the rest, Daniel did not know. He said, it has been signed, has been signed. Lord, I praise and I thank you. And when the time reached, when Daniel was dropped to that pit, God remembered the thanksgiving. The mouth for all lions was shut. The entire night Daniel was there. The lion could not even roar. We are being told the lion roars. In that pit, no lion roar. Thanksgiving. The power of the thanksgiving in the middle of a mess. Let Paul and Silas. We can also see the power of the thanksgiving. You know, these people were picked, tortured, brutalized. In fact, they were thrown in a jail full of wound. They were bleeding. They had a reason to complain. God, we are in this state because of you. God, you had the power to defend us. You didn't do it. God, we are now locked in and you are watching. They had right to complain. At the middle of the night, what happened? They woke up, praise God and give thanks. The earthquake happened. Everything shook down. All the doors opened. They all walked out. Even those who were guiding, they were all saved. Conversion took place at that place of a preacher because of thanksgiving. They only gave thanks. The power of thanksgiving during hard times. We are used to finding faults wherever things have not worked. The Bible is trying to convince us today, let us not always find fault. Why is it important for us to give thanks even when we are at a difficulty? Giving thanks at that time when things are not working, it shows that you have lifted God above the situation. It shows that you know that God can fix it. And therefore, you are giving thanks. When we give thanks at that time, God looked at you from heaven. You normally touch the heart of God. Wherever you give thanks, when you are in the hard time, God looked at you from heaven and said, this is my son. This is my daughter. He has full trust in me. And at that particular time, when God is pleased because of your gratitude, the hand of God moves and it changes your life around during that Thanksgiving. You know, I was looking at this prophetess Anna. The woman who lived with a husband for only seven years. And later on, by the time Jesus was presented at the temple, she was 84. Can you imagine? She only lived with her husband for seven years. Only seven. At that point, her story is recorded. She was 84. But there's one thing that struck me with the, with the woman. When Jesus was brought to Simeon, she joined close and gave thanks. She moved close and gave thanks. Maybe she, maybe the husband maybe even died even before they had children. We are not told. Maybe she had a reason to grumble 
And you say, now these ones, wameleta mtoto, wanaringa, sasa mimi niko hivi. You know, he had, he had the right to say that. Because eh? only seven years. Then God had allowed you to live another 84 years. And you are witnessing couples bringing children in the church or in the temple. She so moved close and gave thanks. You have been murmuring about your situation. Can, co can you compare it with that one of Anna? Can you compare your situation to that of Daniel? If their situation were worse, they haven't murmured. What they did, they only gave thanks. Yako kadogo, dunia yote najua. Gratitude. Thanksgiving. When you don't have something and you need it, we always try to complain many things what we do not have. And we forget about what we have. We really think what we have is not enough. So we really complain much about what we don't have. Let us start appreciating God for what we have. <laughs> Moses had only stick. Kakijiti. Sindio? That kijiti did a lot of things. From the time of the burning bush, Mupaka Kwa, Pharaoh, the Red Sea, and the rest. Yo, Kakiji. That's what he had. And when God asked, what do you have? Proudly Moses said, I have a stick. He appreciated the stick. Moses appreciated the stick. And once God, God realized that Moses had appreciated what, God, what he had in his hand, God decided to squarely use that stick. God did not say, now work a stick chini, chukwa stone, apana. Tafuta apana, stick is not enough. No, Moses, would you have, have the stick? God realized Moses appreciated the stick. And he was proudly mentioning the stick. God decided to use the stick. And in every step that Moses performed the miracle, it was through the stick. And that stick because Moses appreciated. Even the time he was talking with God. Najua Moses angedharau kijiti, angetupa kwanza. Hende kwa mungu. Yula kiji? But we're being told, he had it. Because when God asked, what do you have? He showed I have the stick. It means he did not even put it down. He, he approached God with what he had in the hand. In the hand. Approach Christ with what he has given you. With gratitude. And he will use particularly that to change your story. When you look at Ruth, <coughs> Ruth and the mother-in-law, Naomi, in the book of Ruth, Naomi was busy focusing on what she did not have and complaining about. Ruth, on the other hand, was focusing on what she had. The words of Naomi was, Turn back, my daughters. I don't have sons anymore. Even if I can give birth to other sons, you cannot wait. Now me is point painting. Only what did he not have? Huh? Ruth spoke a word. But where you will be, I will be. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Ruth is sticking with what she had. She had a mother-in-law. And that's all for her. And appreciating. I don't have a husband now. But I have a mother-in. And Ruth stuck to that. Having a mother 
in law. And that is how Ruth pronounced those words and moved with Naomi. The same verse of Ruth tells us that Boaz got married to Ruth. What Naomi was saying, I kukua. After Ruth had appreciated what she had, amepata bwa na majapata. No, the Bible tells us he got to Boaz. When Ruth was saying, now you will, you will not give birth, they gave birth to Obed. And let me tell you, Obed was the father to Jesse, the father to and Jesus is from which lineage? We call him the son of David until today. Why did that one happen? Because Ruth showed gratitude in the middle of a mess. When you show gratitude in the middle of a mess, God reward in a big way. Ruth was rewarded in a very big Remember now, we talked of Jesus, the lineage of the same Ruth, because we call him the son of David, and David is from the same lineage. Ruth accepted the situation with gratitude. From today, three things. Start showing gratitude for small things. Always show gratitude for small things. Express your gratitude verbally. Speak about it. Talk about the gratitude. The last one. change your attitude from complaining to thanksgiving. Always find a reason to thank God. If you find yourself alive and breathing, there are many people who are struggling to breathe. If you have good health, there are many today who, whose health are not the line. If you can have a meal, there are many who go without it. Even if your family members are not perfect, thanks God for them. There are many whose family members no longer alive. If you find yourself in this place to worship God, to speak to God, to listen to God, there are many countries that there's no even freedom of worship. In a nutshell, I'm saying, can you always find a reason to thank God? Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We magnify your name because you are good. We have sinned because we have complained. But this morning, Father, we are turning from our sin. We are speaking gratitude. We confess the thanksgiving, Jehovah Father. Will you change our language? Let us always have a language of thanksgiving. Let us have a language of gratitude. We thank you, Jehovah. We worship you. Where we erred, you forgive us. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' precious name. take home something that